This is your total information source. The Mike Gallagher Show. The news is happening now. And we keep you connected to the headlines like no one else. And now, here is Mike Gallagher. I was just talking to a friend of mine about how tough it is to get everything in in one show. You know, there were some days in the world of talk radio where you had to scour the, 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 the media sites for topics. There's no shortage of topics these days. And today is one of those um, typical breaking news days. The day started with the pretty shocking news that 77-year-old Roger Ailes, the founder, the president of Fox News, has died. Uh, a statement has just been released from the office of Rupert Murdoch, which reads... Everybody at Fox News is shocked and grieved by the death of Roger Ailes. A brilliant broadcaster, Roger played a huge role in shaping America's media over the last 30 years. He will be remembered by the many people on both sides of the camera that he discovered, nurtured, and promoted. Roger and I shared a big idea, which he executed in a way no one else could have. In addition, Roger was a great patriot who never ceased fighting for his beliefs At 21st Century Fox, we will always be enormously grateful for the great business he built. Our thoughts and prayers are with his wife, Elizabeth, and son, Zachary. Few people have changed the face of television the way Roger Ailes did. And many years ago, when I was just starting out in national syndication, and I did an appearance on CNN, and there was some story in the news that sort of had Roger in the periphery, and I defended Roger Ailes on CNN. Later that day, I got a call in my office, and it was Roger Ailes. And he called to thank me for defending him. He said that was, you didn't have to do that. And I noticed it and I saw it and I wanted to know how much I appreciated it. And a few months later, I was signed on as a contributor on the Fox News channel, where I have been a contributor ever since. That was probably 13 years ago. Roger was very, very loyal to to his team. And, of course, sadly, uh, back in July, left Fox News under this whole cloud of controversy over claims of sexual harassment and millions of dollars paid out to the women who made that th- those claims. Just a, a really shocking end today to what has been a, uh, a, a, a shocking story. Another story that, you know, of course, the Jim, James Comey and the special counsel and all the other things that are making headlines today and, and that we've got to cover, but also comes the story out of Tulsa. Uh, And maybe you saw Officer Betty Shelby on 60 Minutes a couple of weeks ago. This is the female officer in Tulsa who shot dead um, a motorist, a a, a guy by his car, and he was behaving in an odd way, and he had his hands up, and he kept walking to his car. And as you saw the video, it was captured on uh, dash cam video, He, he moved near his car and he appeared to reach into his car, ignoring her commands to stop. And she shot him and killed him. Well, after nine hours of deliberations, a jury last night acquitted this police officer of a first-degree manslaughter charge in the death of Terrence Crutcher. Now, you know, he was black, she's white, here we go again. And for many people in in the activist community, it's going to be an example of another officer killing an unarmed motorist and getting away with it. To the rest of us, white, black, green, we see a story that would have been averted had the person done what the police officer told him to do. I don't know how many of us would walk away from an officer who says, don't move, stop moving, don't go to your car, stop it, stop it, stop it, and he walked over to the car and stuck his hands inside the window anyway. She's fearing for her life. And I don't know if if her 60 Minutes emotional appearance a week or two ago had any bearing on this. She was tearful. She was uh, very regretful, but she didn't have any apologies for the way she said she was trained to respond. You do what a police officer tells you to do. Don't know why that's hard. I don't know why that's tough and why that has to become a big racial controversy. And, of course, the huge story, the appointment of Robert Mueller, the former FBI director, as a special counsel to investigate alleged Trump campaign Russia collusion. Last night, a pretty breathtaking admission by CNN's Dana Bash, 
Dana Bash had basically a warning for President Trump. Her warning was, if you cross the deep state, the deep state will get back at you. A lot has been said about the deep state, the leaks that have been coming out of the White House. It's not a leak, it's Niagara Falls. Last time there have been leaks like this, a guy with a beard built a big boat. And yet, there are plenty who believe that the problem Donald Trump faces is from his own team. It's time to drain his own swamp, says Daniel Halper. He's with the Washington Free Beacon. He wrote a very compelling piece this week quoting someone as saying no one in the White House likes or respects Donald Trump. We'll get Daniel Halper's reaction to the appointment of Robert Mueller and his belief that Donald Trump needs to start cleaning house in his own shop, in his own White House. Daniel Halper and more coming up as we continue the Mike Gallagher Show from the studios of AM 1170, The Answer in beautiful San Diego. Our number, if you want to join us, 1-800-655-MIKE. You can call or text us, 800-655-6453. Welcome in. I've been, get, I've been getting a lot of nice notes, texts, emails from people here in San Diego welcoming me to our live time slot. Big team here, great team. Dale Hendry and his staff, Noah Dingley, my buddy from a long time ago, and uh, just just nice notes. As somebody said, I'm glad to see you, glad to see you saw La Jolla. I hope you went to the Cave Store. Next trip, I'll go see the Cave Store, whatever the Cave Store is. I'll uh, I'll learn all about it. Daniel Halper is contributing editor of the Washington Free Beacon. He uh, is the New York Times bestselling author of Clinton, Inc. He wrote a piece this week at, at the uh, Washington Free Beacon about the need for Donald Trump to, to focus on the source of all the leaks that have caused so many problems uh, in the last few months. Let's welcome on our guest line Daniel Halper, who joins us. Hey, Daniel, thank you so very, very much for spending some time with us here on the Mike Gallagher Show. How you been? I'm excellent. How are you, Mike? I'm doing well. I appreciate your time, and I appreciate your work. Um, last night I saw Alan Dershowitz on an interview, and he, he got very animated. He said, you want to know why people are exposed right now in the intelligence community and why maybe some people are going to get killed who are Israeli spies that have infiltrated ISIS? Because of the leaks, because of the people committing felonies, because of the people who ought to go to jail, who seem to have the New York Times and the Washington Post on speed dial, you wrote this very, very powerful piece about the lack of support that Donald Trump is receiving from those who are surrounding him. Walk us through what you say is this major crisis that President Trump faces with regards to his team. Yeah, look, I don't name names, but I think it's the, really the source of his dysfunction in the White House. Obviously, you know, you, you have to give some credit or blame to the, to the president himself. But I think he is surrounded by people, and I've been told this by, by sources, and, and I've observed this over the course of both the campaign and now during the presidency. He's now surrounded by people who are not loyal to him. They are there in the White House for their own ambitions, for their own reasons. But they're not there because they think that Donald Trump is a great man and, and it will be a great president. And I think it is creating a scenario or, where people don't trust each other. People are leaking against each other. People are leaking against the president, all trying to save themselves and make themselves look good. It's really a disaster. And I think it's only going to get worse unless there's some sort of staff shakeup. Well, and, 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 and he's a guy who's, who's pretty plugged in to, I mean, uh, supposedly he, he, he carefully monitors how his, how his press secretary handles press conferences. He uh, watches people on TV who are representing him. Daniel, this cannot be a problem that he's unaware of. I'm not sure how aware of it he is. Look, the way people treat him in person is very different than the way they tell me about their the, their you know, the president, the way they treat uh, Donald Trump, you know, the way staff grovels toward him and on what the way um, on the record, they're willing to say certain things, whereas on background or if as long as they're going to be quoted anonymously, they'll they don't mind 
saying derogatory things. I think that's the difference, the two timing nature of this. Not that publicly, yes, they're supportive, and yes, they could be saying other things that would make his life easier. That's another problem, his communication strategy and whatnot. But it's the two timingness of it all that I think is just, we haven't really seen this before. You know, right. Barack Obama. He had a lot of staff members who really thought the guy could walk on water. He, they thought that he was amazing. Nothing that he could do was wrong. They really believed the hype. And in some ways, you could make the argument that it, it, it probably isolated him and he didn't it, didn't. it didn't serve him perfectly. But I think in many ways, it didn't leak against each other. They didn't leak against the president. They didn't make President Obama look bad. And we just didn't have this portrait of Obama the way we have of President Trump. And, and I want to and I want to go back around it. And I want to go back to something you said. Let's be clear. You're you're telling us that you have spoken to people inside the Trump administration who have said derogatory things about him. Yes. Now, now that's crucial because, you know, it seems to me that that, you know, if they're playing both sides against the middle, this is a no brainer. He's got to have people on his team who believe in his agenda, who believe in him and are willing to walk through a brick wall for him in the way that you described Obama staffers doing, having done. And if not, they got to get out. He's got to get rid of them. They, they, they should be they should be out of there because, like I said, this isn't a, these aren't leaks. This is Niagara Falls. This is insane. Going back to the Australian prime minister phone call that was almost immediately leaked. I mean, th- these these leaks are insane. It never happened uh, in the Obama administration, the Clinton administration. It didn't happen in the Bush administration. We've never seen anything like this. Yeah, I think the only close example might be Bill Clinton. But even then, they thought that, that he was sort of a genius, and they, they, there was a certain kind of respect for him. I mean, you know, think back to, like, George Stephanopoulos' book, which was pretty vicious. But also, it was just slightly different, and I think he did have more loyalty. Here, it's it really is sort of every man for himself, and it's right. like it's like Hunger Games out there. It's it's not. I mean, I don't understand how you can run an administration, and how you can try to get serious things done like tax reform or you know health care. You can see it's, it's struggling. Maybe it will come through. They've had some progress, but how do you get serious things done when you can't? when you can't trust the people around well, you. Well, here's what I don't understand. Leaks should be able to go both ways. This should be a double-edged sword. And by that I mean, why is it so difficult to to publicly identify those who are responsible for the leaks? Because, and I don't want to put you on the, on the spot, because I know, I get that you want to protect your sources and your con- your contacts and all that. But clearly you, Daniel Halper, you know, you know probably who's leaking. I, I got to believe a lot of people do. Why aren't they being identified? I look, they tell me that these things on the condition that they not be identified, right? So they sort of speak more freely on the condition they not be identified, and, and that, those are the ground rules. That's how journalism works. You know, you have, you, if you agree to certain ground rules, you can't break them. But I do – I wrote the piece because I think people should be aware. I think it gives insight into how the administration works, and, and honestly, the president should be aware. That yeah, but it's one thing to have a conversation with you uh, at the Washington Free Beacon. Let's be honest here, and let's be clear. Some of these leaks – Especially involving national security, intelligence. These are these are felonies. These are these are leaks that are crimes that should be that that, that absolutely should be resulting in people being incarcerated. Right, right, and that's and that's but then it becomes sort of a criminal nature, and that's totally different. And and by the way, according to President Trump, that was one of his uh, problems with with uh, FBI Director Comey is that he right. wasn't pursuing this vigorously enough. Right, uh, right. I, I think. That's one way to do it, and of course, we know the legal process can take many months, sometimes years, to, to and the investigative process can take months and years to work itself out. Another way to do it is to try to examine the people around you and make sure that they have decent people who believe in you to be around you. Uh, and you know, look, obviously, President Trump. The weird thing is, he does have very, very loyal fans. Obviously, it's just not people in the White House. Well, that's too bad. Uh, you could read Daniel Halper's piece that entitled No One in the White House Likes or Respects Trump. That accord, according to the words of a source with very close ties to a number of officials in the White House. And we've got his article posted at MikeOnline.com. Daniel Halper, I appreciate you taking some time with us here on the Mike Gallagher Show. All the best. Thank you, Mike. All right, take care. We're going to do a little bit of a roundup. Robert Mueller heading up the uh, special counsel to investigate the alleged Trump 
Russia ties, the acquittal of that Tulsa police officer. We'll get reaction to that. There's a lot ahead. 1-800-655-MIKE. Welcome in to a busy Thursday edition of the Mike Gallagher Show. I am a gigantic fan of yours. Maybe your number one fan. Oh, and thanks. People really like talking to Mike. Patty, you're next up. How you doing today, Patty? So glad to talk to you. I've been a, a listener for so many years. Aw, uh, thank you. Well, I'm so glad you joined us today. Thanks. I'm glad you got through. I have to tell you, I've never called in. Well, welcome aboard. But I end up talking to myself, and so therefore <laughs> I decided to call you. Get on the phone. Give him a call. 1-800-655-MIKE. Now, back to your favorite Mike and mine, Mike Gallagher. Thank you, Peter Reith. Got a nice email from somebody this morning who said it, is been, it has been amusing to watch the level of crazy from the Democrats over President Trump. They think they've got him now. They think they've got him boxed in a corner. Congressman Al Green is a piece of work. Listen to this guy. out of He's a Democrat out of Texas. He, t- <laughs> he took to the floor last night. Uh, of the House and made the following claim. This is your day. I'm speaking to the American people. It is time for you to act. It is time for you to let us know where you stand. I've seen a poll that indicates that a majority now of those who are being polled are for impeachment. The American people should speak up, speak out, stand up so that we will get a sense of what the American people want. And this is where I stand. I will not be moved. The president must be impeached. That's normal. That's a normal response. And he saw a poll somewhere, you know. I I saw a poll that, you know, was a voice in my head that said, Mike, you're Napoleon Bonaparte. That's my poll numbers, you know. I mean, these guys are crazy. This is crazy. I mean, Maxine Waters, she's another one. Here's, Here's a double cut. Let me give you a double dose of Congressman Al Green and Congresswoman Maxine Waters, the pride and joy of Texas and California collectively. I rise today, Mr. Speaker, to call for the impeachment of the President of the United States of America. I think this is going to put us a little bit further on our way to what I've been calling for for so long, and that is impeachment. Thank you. Yay! Yay! So there you go. I mean, that's that's kind of the state of the Democrat Party right now. There and and who knows what this special counsel development will do. Bottom line is, there there now is going to be an investigation to see if there's collusion between the Trump campaign and uh, and Russia. Even though there's not been any evidence presented thus far that there's any such collusion, you think with all the leaks and with all the inside information that we know all about the 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 uh the way russia made wisconsin voters vote for donald trump you'd think we get every detail by now about how the kremlin pushed some buttons and made voters in florida say ah you know what i was going to vote for hillary but now i'm going to vote for donald trump thank you russia what would i have done without you moscow what would we have done with this is that's how crazed they are and Michael Moore, he's got a movie coming out, documentary about Donald Trump. Michael Moore says it's the beginning of the end. The beginning of the end. Whoa. All right, let's take some phone calls. 22 minutes before the hour, toll-free number 800-655-MIKE. A very busy news day. Cannot wait to get tomorrow to the story of, I, I hope you're ready for this, a terrorist, convicted terrorist, who's going to be honored in the Puerto Rican Day Parade tomorrow uh, in in New York City, that that this is the most astounding. That there's going to be celebrations, there's jubilation over a guy named Oscar Lopez Rivera. Now there are people who lost their loved ones in a string of bombings during the 70s and 80s. Barack Obama commuted this guy's sentence, and now he's going to be the guest of honor in the Puerto Rican Day Parade in New York City. Uh, Some scary, scary stuff. I'll give you those details. Also breaking today on top of the uh, Robert Mueller special counsel bombshell yesterday, late yesterday, 
the acquittal of that Tulsa police officer who uh, killed an unarmed motorist who was not obeying her commands to stop moving, and he moved near the window of his car, reached inside the car. She shot him dead. She went on 60 Minutes a few weeks ago, and it was a tearful appearance where she said, of course, how sorry she was that he died, but she wasn't sorry for what she did because he wouldn't obey her commands. He was, And incidentally, sort of buried in the 60 Minutes report was the admission that the guy had illegal drugs in his system and an, and illegal drugs that often force people or lead to people acting erratically I believe it was angel dust or pcp if i'm not mistaken but that was her suspicion that he was acting in a way that as a as a as a veteran police officer she knew this is the way this guy's acting and the family of course not uh, not taking this quietly. We'll see what happens in Tulsa now that this police officer has been found not guilty. Mike, you're on the Mike Gallagher Show, 20 before the hour. How you doing, Mike? Great, Mike. Good. Good to hear. <laughs> and uh, I am 100% without a doubt sure that the Democrats, the moment Trump won the election, they immediately hit the war rooms and started plotting how to manufacture anything and everything possible to get him impeached. This yep. is the goal they wanted from day one, and they have scrutinized anything and everything that man has done. They've created drama out of thin air. Their hypocrisy and their lies are astounding, and it is the dirtiest Chicago politics I have ever seen in my 58 years. Well, you remember when Barack Obama once said, uh, you know, you don't bring a you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. You know, that's that's the Chicago way. You know, the Chicago political scene is is has been dirty and corrupt for many, many years. They play hardball. And, uh, I, you know, I was on a stage with Ted Cruz, Senator Ted Cruz, a few weeks ago in Dallas. And he said something that was profound, and I, I've repeated this a number of times. He said, there is right now a very determined effort to destroy careers and ruin the lives of people who are in Trump's orbit. Not just disagreeing with somebody politically, not just, you know, we had this interesting exchange yesterday about a, this never-Trumper, Charlie Sykes. And I really do want him on the show. He's a smart guy. He's a former talk show host out of Wisconsin. It'll be kind of controversial probably to have them on because a lot of people get very angry at the never-Trumpers, Republicans who are committed to, it seems, stopping Donald Trump dead in his tracks. And this back and forth was so interesting. Even Jonah Goldberg apparently was listening, and he tweeted out, you know, it's kind of amusing listening to Mike Gallagher talk, uh, you know, see if with his listeners if they dare have on Charlie Sykes. Well, no way we're saying anything about daring to have him on. I was interested in the, the genuine res- response my audience would have to having a well-known Republican who has written quite articulately about conservatism in the era of Trump. And I am fascinated by that topic. We know Donald Trump isn't a movement conservative. We, we, We know that he's not particularly ideologically driven, not at least the way his 16 opponents were in the primary. But that back and forth, and rather than I have a friend who wants to go to war, we got to go to war with these never Trumpers and shut them down. No, I don't want to go to war. I want to. I want to understand every point of view, and have a reasonable, productive conversation. We can disagree without hating each other, especially if we're Republicans, and we want the direction of this country to change. And that's what I wanted this show to be. So I'm not. I'm not interested in picking fights or f- having feuds with people who don't see this the way I do. What I'm fascinated by is the viciousness, the anger that some of these never-Trumpers have, and certainly those on the left and those Democrats who hate with such an unbridled passion. There's a line that I think Lindsey Graham has used a lot, and I don't think even Lindsey Graham originated it. But the line is, I'm a conservative, I'm just not angry about it. Well, I feel the same way. I'm supporting Donald Trump, and I'm not angry about it. And I'm not angry at you if you have genuine concerns about some aspects of the Trump presidency. I get it if you're worried about his tweets. I get it if you wish he was a little bit less 
uh, a bull in a china closet. I get it if you feel like, you know, you were you wish he was a little less bombastic. It's okay. We can disagree without knocking each other's heads off and try to be in this together and realize we're fighting for a country here. We want the country to succeed. If Trump succeeds, the country succeeds. I don't know why that's such a hard concept to wrap your brain around. 17 minutes before the hour, our toll-free number, 800-655-MIKE. More of your calls and coming up, some thoughts on the passing of a man who changed the face of television over the last 20 years or so. The day started with the pretty shocking announcement that Roger Ailes, the founder of Fox News Channel, has died at the age of 77. I'll give you some of my thoughts and my take and my interaction with Roger Ailes as a longtime Fox News contributor. That and more as we continue from sunny San Diego on a Thursday edition of the Mike Gallagher Show. Stay with us. Mike Gallagher. This portion of our show brought to you by the wonderful Hillsdale College. Hillsdale has a brand new online course called Introduction to the Constitution. You're going to be hooked. I mean, all these lessons from Hillsdale are free. They're under 15 minutes long. you got to see this two-minute trailer, and you'll see what I mean. Just go to my website, mikeonline.com. Click on the Hillsdale banner to learn more, or you can watch it. Just go to mikeforhillsdale.com, mikeforhillsdale.com. Uh, The day started with the shocking news that the founder of Fox News Channel, Roger Ailes, has died at the age of 77. We found a speech that he gave to some college students. This was at Taft College about two years ago. Um, This was a side of Roger Ailes that, that people who watch Fox News and kind of follow the news business probably never heard. But this is a little bit of this is a glimpse into uh, part of at least the personality and the persona of Roger Ailes. We have a historic history, and we have a heroic history as well. Many of the traditional values and institutions that made this country great are under attack. That's fine, because we have freedom of speech and freedom of the press. But if there is a defense for the right things we do, it will fall on your generation to stand up for them and fight for them and be fair when you're criticizing. Keep in mind, the way you can tell we have a great country, everybody's trying to get in and nobody's trying to get out. Think about that. Don't let people talk you out of succeeding, make you feel guilty about making a good living. We have a responsibility to assist the poor. Who assists the poor? The rich. I have to go to an event every night in Manhattan to raise money to help somebody, which I'm happy to do. But don't hate one segment of society in deference to the other. You want to be rich, so you can help. You can give it all away if you want. And then you can really help. But don't dislike the people who achieve and succeed. You can do whatever you want with it once you get it. But don't listen to those who say it's a bad idea to achieve or succeed or to get rich. Every time I needed a job, I went to a rich guy. I I love poor people, but they never had a job for me. (laughs) I work for Rupert Murdoch. He's rich. Uh, Also a very nice guy and also gives millions and millions to charity. So just be sure you get it in perspective. There's some perspective uh, of Roger Ailes and, of course, whose career and uh, tenure at Fox News ended in a uh, spectacularly controversial way. 
that, that, you know, everybody has been aware of. But that's a side of Roger Ailes, the founder of Fox News, and a message from him. And he was old school. I mean, this is a guy been been in uh, the trenches of political battles for a lot of years. But I, but a quick personal story, uh, and I'm, I don't doubt it's a big reason why I, I've been a Fox News contributor. And a lot of people would just kill to be a Fox News contributor. They they would sell their soul to be on Fox News. It's the biggest cable news network in the country and continues to, to succeed beyond, I think, anyone's wildest expectations. A number of years ago when I started out in syndication and I did an appearance on CNN and there was something about Roger who was kind of peripherally in the story and uh, I defended him uh, on CNN and later that day I got a phone call in my office and it was Roger. I didn't know him, and he didn't know me. He just wanted to thank me for my kind words on his behalf. And a few months later, I was signed as a contributor, and I've been there for, I guess, the last, I think it's been 13, 14 years as a Fox News contributor. And uh, he was very, very loyal to people who were loyal to him. And um, make no mistake, just about everybody you see at Fox News, Roger had a, uh, a role in making sure they are where they are and, uh, you know, so anyway, just a, what an end to an incredible story and a, an explosive story towards the end, but a, uh, a life uh, that contributed to, to politics and to television in a way that very few could. And it's a little, it's more than a little pathetic to see some of the ugly, vile things that some people are posting on Twitter over the death of Roger Ailes, who was a, a husband and a father and a brother Leaves behind, I think, a 17 or 18 year old son, Zachary, his wife, Beth, and his brother, and, um, you know, people who know that the entire industry was affected by his, what, what, what even his fiercest critics say was his brilliance. Uh, his brilliance in the media. This portion of the Mike Gallagher Show, our final day in the studios of AM 1170, The Answer in San Diego, brought to you by the one and only MyPillow. The general manager here, Dale Hendry, got his MyPillow delivery yesterday. When I was in the hallway, it was all we were all excited. It was like Christmas morning watching Dale open up the MyPillow. This is the pillow everybody's talking about, the pillow that never goes flat during the night. It conforms to your head and your neck in a way that no other pillow does. You can pop in the washer, the dryer, uh, any, anytime you want. Keep it nice and fresh and clean. And the Mike 4-Pack special continues. When you go to MyPillow.com, use the promo code MikeG, you'll get 50% off your order. 50% on all the products you order at MyPillow.com. Best pillow I've ever slept in, slept on in my life. Of course, I have my MyPillow travel pillow with me here in San Diego. Go to MyPillow.com, promo code MikeG, or call 800-928-6034, 800-928-6034. Wide world is mypillow.com. Promo code Mike G.